Hi, this is my first video, never done one before. Um, hopefully I won't drive you guys too crazy, but this is a, a flip through of how I have my planner set up. It's a little bit different than some people's planners, uh, specifically because I have a couple of disabilities. I talk about them on my website from time to time, um, my blog. I have not blogged in a while. I need to get back into it because I've tried to create an environment that um, makes life living with a disability a little bit easier because you can do things that either help or hamper it. So um, this is a Chic Sparrow B6 Odyssey Deluxe in Athena. It is the first Chic Sparrow I've ever had. I've always been in um, Filofax or Franklin Covey. Started with Franklin Covey in 1989 and then started carrying a Filofax in about 1998. So this is my first time um, working with an elastic bound uh, planner. So far I'm really liking this one, it's really beautiful. Um, this little charm is off of a keychain from the Intermountain Suzuki Institute here in Utah. Um, leaf I found in my front yard, I was messing around with some laminating paper, so I just laminated that just to see what would happen. A little science experiment. Uh, my dashboard is just some vellum with a quote uh, glued on to some pretty cardstock. Uh, second dashboard, family pictures. Um, blooms, yeah. So I have never been able to get away from Franklin Covey tabbed uh, monthly pages. Thankfully, they come in a package just by themselves, so I don't have to, you know, buy 365 days plus tabs just to get monthly tabs. So this has the uh, monthly calendars for 2018 and 2019. And then, like I said, I've got tabs. I love the tab calendars for the month. I do find that I have to trim these along the sides because as most people know, Franklin Covey pages are wider than Filofax pages. Um, and because most of my planners are Filofax, still, I have a Malden and a couple of Lockwoods, um, I do have to trim the pages or they stick out pretty far on the right side. So, uh, I am trying something new lately. Uh, in the past, I've always had, um, I guess you'd call it hard-coded, uh, where the specific date on a specific piece of paper and if you didn't use anything on that day then it was just blank. I'm trying something a little bit different right now of um, kind of doing some freeform pages with dot grid. Uh, about the last three years I've used DIY Fish pages which it's a wonderful company. She does a great job. Very responsive to her clients. But I found that as I'm getting older, the, um, the grid pattern, I don't know that I have any other paper in here that shows, okay, so this is the grid pattern that you get when you print out DIY fish inserts. And essentially for me, because I have a traumatic brain injury and I have vestibular disease, looking at um, graph paper makes me dizzy. So I have had to, to come up with something different. So what I did was I bought a PDF of dot grid, five millimeter dot grid, it's either five or four, from Pixel Penguin Press on Etsy. And then I put that as my background in Print Shop, which is, is just a publishing software. It's you know fairly inexpensive uh, for Mac. My version's quite old. <laughs> And then, you know, I put a couple of graphics in. I'm still working on getting the perfect spacing for how my planner is laid out. And then I have, um, this is a flexible cutting board. There are a number of tutorials on YouTube on creating um, page finders or mobile writing surfaces out of um, cutting board, flexible cutting board from Amazon. And I can put the link to, um, to the cutting board that I bought off of Amazon into the notes of the video because I've been carrying basically one of these for several months in, in my general file effects that I have been using. And one thing I found that I really like about it is most um, today tabs 
or page finders or they stop about here. The, the standard Filofax one stops about here. And I find you're writing along and then you have this bump. You kind of fall off of the page finder if you're writing, you know, here. And so I decided to do this as a writing surface. It makes it really nice for pencils. You don't tend to go through the paper if you're using a, a very fine um, pencil, like a 0.3 millimeter or something like that. So I've been really happy with it. And then I just put a little washi tape on top. So I've got more free form pages. I'm basically doing a day on two pages. So appointments on the left, I don't have anything written in yet. And space for journaling and notes on the right. And then my December. One other thing I'm doing that I picked up as a great habit from DIY Fish is color coding. So if you need to look up an event later on a flip through, um, if you can look on the right side, the right margin of your pages, and you assign a specific color to a specific person or a specific task. And then when you do your flip through, you can find pages where something significant happened for those people or those tasks. So university deadlines would be important. Um, pet appointments, if somebody got sick, um, that kind of thing. The way I made this cardstock floppy foldable is I went through and scored it with a um, quilting blade, it's a serrated blade uh, rotary cutter. And that makes it pretty floppy and yet it doesn't want to tear out. So, And then I just put a tab on there called color coding so that I can flip this open when I'm doing notes and then color code on the side and then I have this over here to look at as a reference just in case I forget who is what color. Since we haven't done color coding in a while, <laughs> it's gonna take a while to get everybody memorized again. So this is my inbox. This is something else new I've done. I've never actually used an inbox. I've always made a point of scheduling things at the time the thought pops into my head. But I have discovered there are times where that's just not possible. There's, you know, something pops into your head and you're sitting in a traffic light and you hand your Filofax to your teen daughter and say, write this down for me. It, those kinds of things need a place to go temporarily. So that's what the inbox is for. I got that from watching a Carrie Harling video. So everything gets dumped into the inbox and then it'll eventually get scheduled. So I've got like vaccinations for my cats, stuff like that. Scratch paper, so inbox is another really good place to carry scratch paper. So if you need to write a phone number or an email address down for somebody, you can just rip it out, hand it to them, and you're done. I have a tab for self-care. It's got blood pressure, log, um, different things for sensory soothing. I have sensory processing disorder, and when I get overloaded, I can't remember the things I need to do to calm down. So I keep lists of things that work. So that's in there. Um, family tab is stuff for family members that I'm responsible for. Um, asthma action plan for my daughter. Like if she has a flare up, what are we supposed to do? Um, each one of my pets has a page so that I know when they had x-rays, when they had vaccinations, that kind of thing. Um, all but one of my pets are rescue and um, I tend to, I tend to adopt the underdog. Um, I tend to adopt pets with health problems. And so it's important to keep, to keep track on, you know, who weighs how much, when they had a test, when they had a urinalysis, that kind of thing. And then I have my drug, my drug, my dog training key. Um, I have had a service dog off and on for about seven years. Um, the service dog I have right now is semi-retired. He came down with a chronic health issue about two years ago. But he does work occasionally. Um, it, it would take forever to explain, but basically he can't work when it's hot outside. So, but these are things that we practice um, throughout the year to keep his skills fresh, even if he's not working. Um, books. So I've got a little page of books that I have read and then I have something that I created for myself called my big reading challenge Which is all the books. It's like a bucket list of books 
Um, it's a combination of the Great American Read, um, some list of things, you know, those kinds of lists of things you should have read by the time you graduated from college, um, those kinds of lists. So it is a huge bucket list of books that I want to read. Um, favorite authors, series in order. I'm kind of a book nerd, you'll notice. Um, music. This is a picture of my daughter. She is a violinist and a violist, and I am as well. <laughs> So this is her about six months ago. So under music, we keep notes about things like um, instrument maintenance. When were bows last rehaired? When did strings get changed? That kind of thing. Um, teaching ideas. I'm working on teacher certification so that I can eventually teach music. Um, sewing. I sew quite a bit. I haven't sewn in the last couple of months because I had some surgery and I haven't been able to, but I found this little picture on the internet and I thought it was really cute. So these are where my sewing projects are listed. Things that I have bought specific material for or fabric or notions for that are going to get done. So I have all of that there. And then I just have some pretty dot grid pages that I put some fun little pictures on. I... Uh, education, everything related to my degree that I'm working on. I don't have anything in there just yet because I ended up having to take the semester off on medical leave, so I'll get that updated before January. Household will end up being um, chores, checklist of chores, things like that. Don't have anything in there yet. Um, miscellaneous, um, goofy things like what size is my sewing machine bobbin? I can never remember that when I go to the store to buy more bobbins. Um, so just little things like that in miscellaneous. Um, contacts update project is, uh, I've always, well, I think most of us do. We store our contacts on our phones now and we don't ever put them on paper anymore. But there are times when looking it up on your phone isn't possible. Your phone ran out of battery or you're in an area where, you know, there's very little service, um, that kind of thing. So. I just felt better being able to have something written down if I got into a spot and had to look up a number and didn't have any other way to do it. It's kind of a safety net. And then I have some more of that uh, flexible cutting board in the back um, just because it stops, having a piece of plastic in the back stops the paper from kind of getting shoved down. If you've ever used rings before, you'll you'll know that the last couple of pieces of paper in your binder tend to get kind of curled on the edge because they kind of slide underneath the rings. Um, and that's all of that. The rings are from my LK shop on Etsy. I'll put the link out there for the video for that. Um, let's see. This paper is from a company called Jam. I get the paper on Amazon. Uh, it's nice paper. It's, I believe, 30 to 50 percent um, recycled paper. Um, next month, I'm planning to try a combination of Tomo. I'm not sure if that's how you say it. Tomo River or and um, Staples has a really nice uh, sugarcane recycled sugarcane um, paper. I think it has a little bit of bamboo content in it as well. Um, I've had notebooks of it in the past, spiral notebooks, and they were really worked out well, and then I discovered they had loose leaf paper. So I'm going to try that um, next month. The only issue I foresee having with it is it is white paper, which I don't usually use. You'll notice I usually use cream just because it's a little bit easier for eye strain. So it's easier to read when your eyes are tired at the end of the day. So that's everything. Thanks for being patient with me. Um, if you'd like, leave me some feedback and let me know what I can do better. Thanks so much. Have a great day.